Okay. Good evening, and welcome to another lecture given by the Meridian class. First of all, this is a school and not a church. Neither are we associated with any religious organization, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh, given to Dr. Henry C. Kinley in the year of 1931. And the charts you see pictorially illustrated before you are the results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists, exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now, taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, is known as Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and understood by divine revelation. <coughs> As stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when a Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title, for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now, manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world, is Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct original name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the Word of Son and Elohim, Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world, is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world today are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language and did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders of our Heavenly Father, true and correct name, Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and age. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. 
eight to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known to Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our white word is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We have prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez and strips lesson by Dr. Vanessa Tyler. And strips lesson be Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Good, e <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, let us bow our heart and our mind for prayer. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are again thankful for this opportunity to gather together with the brethren. We are thankful that you have kept us with a sound mind, with a continuous focus on you and those things that <clears throat> you are doing. Thank you for this gift of eternal life, for re giving us this vision and this revelation for freeing us from the bondage of this world. We are thankful that you have proved to us that you have set us free, but that we do not take this freedom as a liberty to the flesh. We thank you for all the hearts that you have moved together on this call tonight and for giving us a sincere desire to do those things that are pleasing in our sight. And as we gather together tonight, we ask you to continue to gather us together in our own heart and mind. We ask you to keep us steadfast, keep us focused in on those things that you present to us, not only tonight, but always every day, remember your ever presence. These and our blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Scripture lesson for this evening is Ephesians fourth chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, Ephesians 4th chapter. I therefore, the prisoner of Elohim, beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Elohim, one faith, one baptism, one is Yahweh and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he took captive captivity and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up for above all heavens, that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh, 
unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Messiah, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But being truthful in love, ye may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even the Messiah, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and exhort through Yahweh, that ye henceforth live not as the heathen live in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lustful practices to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned from the Messiah. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahshua, that ye put off your former behavior, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put in a way lion, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the adversary. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt conversation proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh for the Messiah's sake hath forgiven you. Ephesians 4th chapter. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fallon. All right, class. Our first speaker for tonight's lecture will be from the Meridian class, Dr. Charmaine Calloway. Charmaine. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Wasn't expecting that. Okay. Um, let's start um, with the uh, scripture lesson. Let's just go back to the scripture lesson. Start at the first verse. Ephesians 4 and 1. I therefore, the prisoner of Elohim, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There okay. is one body. Go ahead, break. Fourth verse, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Elohim, one faith, one baptism. Okay. <clears throat> now, this gospel that Yahweh has called us unto, 
those that have accepted the Messiah and have put him on know that we truly are a prisoner of Yahweh. We know that because of this divine vision and revelation that was given to the founder of this school, that we have had that same vision and revelation as well. And anyone that is gonna come to this understanding is gonna have to have that same vision and revelation. Get me Proverbs 29 and 18. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish, but he now, that be keepeth those. Now, before coming into the school, I had no idea what a, vi we all, all had visions, but we, it says, um, read that over again, without a prophetic vision. A people perish. Right. And Yahweh gave this vision and revelation to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. And if Yahweh wouldn't have done that, then the people would perish. Because Yahweh said, the people, I want um, Hosea. I'm trying to get my thoughts together. Hosea. Um, let's see. That his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, this teaching is predicated, is on knowledge. John 17 and at 17 chapter 17 and 3 says that eternal life is to know. Mm -hmm. so knowledge your eternal life is predicated upon knowledge you have to know something and you have to know it for sure and your creator you have to believe and know and be assured that your creator is able to give a man a true knowledge and understanding of where he comes from mm -hmm. in this world the man is not sure they're they're going up upon what they learned from when they were brought up by their parents or their grandparents and they they taught taught you to go to church and to you know they they handed down to you what they had but mm -hmm. if you if you were tried and tested on that every man is going to be tried and tested on what they know and I know for myself that I didn't know anything I didn't know where my creator was I didn't know that he had a name. I didn't know any of those things. And I'm thankful unto Yahweh that he has saw fit to come down, to call me into this school so that I could know something for an assurity. Your eternal life is predicated upon you doing and investigation, you finding out for yourself, not based upon somebody else's opinion, somebody else's, you can't go in on anybody else's coattail. And that's what Yahweh has, every tub has to sit on its own bottom. You have to know Yahweh for yourself. John 17 and three or 17. John 17 and one. Yeah, 17 and one. Mm -hmm. these, these words spake 
spake Joshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power of all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, eternal life is being given to as many as the Father has given the Son to give it to. For you to know the Father, you have to have the Son. Mm. And the Son will reveal him. And when we say know the Son, we're talking about Yahshua. We're talking about the Holy Spirit in mm -hmm. you. We're talking about you having a knowledge that is imparted to you by the Holy Spirit. But you have to believe the report. If mm -hmm. you want to experience the power, the certainty, the, the joy, the peace, because mm -hmm. right now that's what we need is peace. All right. If you want to experience that, you're going to have to believe the report. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh is not coming to you, telling you to believe him without any evidence. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has provided every man evidence. And you don't even have to look far right there in yourself. He's provided you with evidence. He said, Romans 1, 19 and 20, you take the natural things to understand the spiritual things. He said, you were made in his likeness and in his image. Now you tell me some other man's concept that is able to hold up to, to that. There is none. Because what your creator, he is capable and able and has done, he has proved his own existence to his creatures. Continue it, 17. Third verse. And this is life eternal. That now you're going to have to know that this is life eternal. You're going to have to know this for an assurity. See, we're at the point now that you got to know something. It can't be no more what somebody else told you. Right. It's got to be certain with you. And if you don't know it for certain, Yahweh said that you just have the faith of a mustard seed. Just that one mustard seed, which is the smallest seed. And you can move mountains. Those mountains that are within you mm -hmm. that come up, the doubt, the, the speculation, the everything that is trying to keep you from accepting what Yahweh has told you. That's the warfare is right there within you. It's not outside of you. It's not with somebody else. You're going to have to realize and understand that the war is right there within you. But you're going to have to know that Yahweh, you're going to have to know something for certain, something for sure. Go ahead. And this is life eternal, that they might know that thou only art the true El and Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Now, if you couldn't know that, if you couldn't know that for sure, what does no mean? Look up the word no. We're talking about certain. We're talking about knowing something. What does no mean? No. Be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information. Have developed a relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with them. Be familiar or friendly with. Uh, developing a, developing mm -hmm. a relationship. Mm -hmm. See, you're developing a relationship with your creator. For what? For what? 
so that you can know that everything he's told you is true through your experiences with him. He, he cannot lie. He cannot tell you that if you, that you can know something and then don't give you the power, don't, don't do it, don't fall through. He's not that kind of Elohim. He's not that kind of creator. Mm -hmm. If he said you can know, then you're gonna have to ask him to give you the faith so that you can know that he is real. So you can know that he is true. So that you can know that he's faithful. Mm -hmm. Ask for him to give you that. He'll do it. Ask him to remove those invisible obstacles out of your way. They're invisible. You can't see them. Those thoughts that come in that are trying and testing you and proving you. Can I read any more to know? Yes, yes, Father, yes. Oh, we, mm. um, to perceive directly. Have direct directly. That's right. I'm sorry. Directly. <laughs> perceive directly. That means not through, not that Yahweh don't use, he speaks through others, but he can speak directly to you mm -hmm. right there <laughs> within you. And you'll know it's him. That's right. You won't have no doubt that it's Yahweh that is speaking to you. Does mm -hmm. not wisdom cry? Mm. Does not understanding put forth her voice? Mm -hmm. To you, O men, I cry. Mm -hmm. At the top mm -hmm. of the gate, he's crying unto you. If we would just be still, be still and know he didn't bring you this far to leave you. He is not a failing L. That's right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. To have understanding of, to recognize the nature of. To recognize as being the same as something previously known. Now, to how? be acquainted. Hmm. I'm sorry. Go hmm. ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> read that part you just read over again. Yes, 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 yes. To recognize as to being recognize the same as being the same as something previously known as something previously known you come to yourself mm. that's right that's right so that mm. see Yahweh is able to restore mm. he's able to bring you back to that consciousness mm -hmm. he's able to do that but you gotta believe him you got to believe you're in the fight of your life. All right. This is the fight of your life right now. Mm -hmm. Go back to the scripture and read, let me that read over. This, let me read this definition I have to okay. to, have, to have knowledge or clear and certain perception as a fact or truth. Clear. So that means it's not muddy. There's no confusion. It says clear mm -hmm. and certain. Mm -hmm. So that, so this is all about knowing. Just that one word knowing means clear. And certain. So you can have a clear and certain relationship with your creator. 
Mm-hmm. And he's not up above the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's right. He's right there within you. How? How? Because <laughs> he's exi- he is wisdom. If mm-hmm. you'll stop and listen to that still, small mm-hmm. voice mm-hmm. that's co- talking to you all the time. Mm-hmm. If you would just stop, ask him to stop the thoughts, ask mm-hmm. him to just slow them down, just stop them, stop them. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking to myself too, because I've had to exercise that because the adversary is seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, that's that right. is real. That's right. We are in a warfare people we are in a warfare Hmm. and it's not for the faint at heart that's right all right so if you need some strength then you're gonna have to get you ask Yahweh to he is your strength ask him to manifest that strength in you to stand up You call upon strength. You call upon courage. Not outside of you, right there in you. And know that he's able to give it to you. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But today, now, when you call. Because he's there. He's ever present. Is that not what he tells us all the time? He's ever present. So when you need strength, when you need comfort, you ask him for it and you wait without moving, without your thoughts, without doubt. And not saying you ain't gonna have a a fight because the adversary finna try to make you move. He's finna try to make you impatient. He's going to try to make you doubt. That's his job. Your job is to fight. And what do you fight with? What's your weapons? What are you fighting with? You're fighting with the truth. You're fighting with the knowledge and the understanding that he's getting, that he is. That's what you're fighting with. That's in you. He's giving it to you. Pick it up. Don't lay your weapons down. We talk about whatever the scripture is about. Put on your armor. But if you don't believe it, then it's of no good to you. Believing is the key. And if you see that you're weak, then you ask for strength. And Yahweh is not going to disappoint you. Surrender. Just go on and give up. Because you can't win this war with, without him. You can't. Trust him. He's not going to disappoint you. Right. Go ahead with seven. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 17. 17 and four. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Okay. The Messiah said he has finished the work which Yahweh gave for him to do. It's a fixed fight. Mm -hmm. He's finished the work. There's nothing you have to do but believe. Mm -hmm. And you better believe the adversary is going to do everything he can to make you not believe it. He's going to throw everything at you, the kitchen sink, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, and anything else he can find. Yourself. 
because you're the enemies are of, of your own household. Your foes. Where, where is that at? I'm sorry. Where is that? The enemies of, are those of your own household. And then I come back to the 17th chapter. I got Matthew 10 and 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his yoke and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Okay, so if you don't take, reread re, re that again, and follow after Yahweh wholeheartedly. That's what we have to do. Follow after Yahweh wholeheartedly. If it was impossible, he wouldn't have told you to do it. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Okay, 1036. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Foe that means loveth. enemies. That's what a foe means. So your enemies are of your own household. Talking about you're the house. Right there within mm -hmm. you, your thoughts. What's going on within you. That's, the, that's what you're fighting against. If you can get that under control, then everything outside of you is going to straighten out. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to fall into to, to, to suit. But if you're chaotic within, if you're not, if everything is going on up there, up there and you're warring, then that's going to manifest on the outside. But when you get that straight inside within you and you bring that down and get it under control, it's going to manifest. You're going to see it and everybody outside is going to see. Three. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth father, mother, child, anything other than Yahweh. And that's because everything, <laughs> it is him. But you have to, you have to embrace Yahweh all the way. Read. And he that taketh not his yoke and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You have to want this. I was told that a long time ago. You have to want it. You have to want to live. And I'm not talking about physically like this. I'm talking about you have to love. <laughs> See, Yahweh said those that hate him love death. Because Yahweh is life. Go back to John 17. Okay. John 17 and 5 and 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have declared thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So the Messiah now declared, they have known. Okay, pause. The Messiah has declared his name to the men that Yahweh has set up. So it's not by happenstance that Yahweh has called you. And if you see that you're called, 
then you make your election sure. You do everything that you can in your power to fight, to fight. And I'm not talking about people, places, and things. I'm talking about right there within you. Because there's enough going on within to, you got, you got. I mean, you, you, you can be occupied with that. That's enough, let alone mm-hmm. anything else. Just to keep straight within your own self, to stay on the path. And I, I always ask that, y'all, would keep me on the straight and narrow path. Because narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Broad mm-hmm. is the way that leadeth to destruction. And I'm talking right. about the, the thoughts and opinions and all of that. Everybody's got everybody out in the world want to tell you, you know, this, this is, uh, this is what God wants. And his name is, I mean, it's just a, a barrage of, of opinions and theories and concepts, but Yahweh right. said narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. It's narrow. There's only one faith. There's only one life. There's only one spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Go ahead. Read. And thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So we know, we know that all things that they are of Yahweh. That's what we have come to know, not guess about, not speculate, but we know this. Why? How? Because the Holy Spirit has revealed them right there in you. He's resp- the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive. Read. For I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. We have received his words. Receive means without protest, accept the presence thereof, Mm -hmm. accept the presence thereof of Yahweh, the Holy Spirit, right there within you. Mm -hmm. That is power. That's right. That is power. If you will just tap into it, use it to profit with all. Mm-hmm. You use that power within you constructively. You use that power within you to overcome the wiles of the adversary. That's what mm-hmm. you use that power within you to get up. Great. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. He's glorified in them, in us. We have received his words. We have accepted them. Mm -hmm. We have to take them on. We have to live in those, live in it. Walk Mm -hmm. in knowledge. Walk in divine knowledge. Walk in divine understanding. Walk in it. Read. And and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. 
And I come to thee, Holy Father, take and keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they now may be. Now he said he's no more in the world. So if you mm -hmm. find yourself in the world, then you have to know that's not where he's at. You got to come out of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about in your heart and mind. If you're still mm -hmm. occupied with the cares of this world and, you know, I'm not talking about your day. That's not what I'm saying, but you know, occupied with, with trying to be rich or trying to attain fame and fortune and all those things. If you're still, if you're still trying to have 15 women, you know, or 30 men or whatever, whatever the world is occupying the world, then if that's where you at, then that's not where Yahweh is at. He said he's, he's not in the world any longer. But he said, these are in, he said, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, take and keep through thy own name. So that's how we have been kept through his name. Mm -hmm. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition in fulfillment of the scripture. So he has kept us. Yahweh is keeping the city. Mm -hmm. And I am thankful. And you have to know that you can't make it in this world. You can't make it without him. That's right. You cannot make it. Mm -mm. Um, go ahead and read. Okay. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word and the world will hate them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, because thy word is truth. So we are sanctified through the truth. We are sanctified or cleansed through the truth. Mm -hmm. Like I think you always said over there where it said by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Right. By Yahweh having mercy on you and the truth being preached to you and you accepting the truth that's how iniquity is purged. That's how you're being cleaned up. It's through this gospel. Through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. Right there within you. Because you have to go through a death. We go through death, burial, and resurrections all the time. Through, you know, whatever situations and all just... Um, all kind of fronts but mm -hmm. that old man has to die we have to we have to change there a change has to be made mm -hmm. that's right we cannot continue to think the way we thought prior to coming to this understanding mm -hmm. yeah i always said his ways are his Thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are his ways our ways. So there has to be a change. I 
I'm going to yield. But my prayer and is that Yahweh will continue to strengthen us and know that don't give up. You continue to fight. You continue to ask Yahweh. And be still and wait on him. If he don't do it today, you wait. But I'm telling you, he's, it's possible for him to do it right now. Not tomorrow, but right now. If you just believe it, just accept it. And you can't do it on your own. But Yah, when, ye, when Yahweh sees that you have truly turned aside, he will make, he said, when your ways please him, he will make all your enemies to be at peace with you. Those within and those without. And I know that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. So I'll yield the floor. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Calloway. All right, class, our next speaker for um, tonight's lecture will be Dr. Janice Roberts. Dr. Roberts? All right. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I truly enjoyed the uh, first speaker, and uh, it's always a pleasure to have a testimony of our father and to share what he has given us to those that are coming in and that are also searching. Now let's get John 5 and 39. John 5 and 39. Mm -hmm. Ye search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of me. Right. But you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men. Right. But I know you that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. Right. So we spent, okay, pause right there. Thank you. Now, um, and that's a uh, condition that we found ourselves in when in the world without a knowledge of our creator. And so by us coming into this school, we learned that first of all, it, that we had to have a name. We had to have the correct name. Let's get where there's no other name whereby man can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Now the world, now if you listen to the moderator, he explained the name and when the J came into existence and everything. So all of these things, that's now, we're talking about a circumcision made without hands. Now see, all that's about the carnal mind and the cutting away of carnal things, having those things removed and replaced with the knowledge of the truth. And she spoke about knowledge and what we have to do in order to put on that new man. Now go ahead, do you have that? X4 and 10. X4 and 10, okay. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, Mm -hmm. And by the name of Yahshua, the Messiah of Nazareth, mm -hmm. whom ye crucified, whom mm -hmm. Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you hope. Right. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, mm -hmm. which is become the head of the corner. Right. Neither is there salvation in any other? Right. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Right. Stop right there. Now, that's 4 and 12. There's salvation in any other, for there's none other name given among, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, that should cause us to pause. 
So we got to have the correct name. Mm -hmm. And they always use the example about if you had a paycheck, you can't cash it without the proper identity. So you want your name on it. You don't want to work and not have your name be on your check and have somebody else's name. So Yahweh said that you have to know him. You have to know who he is and how he truly exists. And so he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we never mm -hmm. knew to ask questions in uh, the scripture lesson talk about uh, let's go back to that. Let's go back to Ephesians. First verse. Uh, first yes. verse. Yes, do the first verse. Ephesians 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. I therefore, the prisoner mm -hmm. of Elohim, beseech you mm -hmm. that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Mm -hmm. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, mm -hmm. bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Right. There is one body mm -hmm. and one spirit. Okay, there's one body. That's for everybody. One spirit. Even Go as ye are called in one hope. Of your calling. Even as you're called in one hope of your calling. See, there's one body and one spirit. See, Yahweh is a unity. He's not a trinity. See, he has one name. And these are all the things that we are being taught and um, that we have to check out and um, prove all things, you know, and hold fast to that, which is good. So let's get um, um I want to get where Yahweh say he will prove to be a unity and with one name. I think that's um is that Deuteronomy four and six or six and four? Zechariah Zechariah fourteen nine. Oh, okay. Zechariah 14 and 9. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. And in that day, Yahweh will prove to be a unity and with one name. Right. So he's going to prove to be a unity and with one name. So that's something that the world teaches that there's, there's a trinity. And see, we'll, we've learned that Yahweh took on a shape and a form as Yahweh Elohim, and he created a creation. That's John. Let's go to John. That's John. John will take care of that. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. Go ahead. And the word was with Yahweh. Mm-hmm. And the word was Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Right. All things were made by him. Right. All things. Now listen to what it's saying. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All, All right. things were made by him. Go ahead. And without him was not anything made that was made. They're right. And without him was not anything made that was made. Go ahead. In him was life. Right. And the life was the light of men. In him was life. And that life was the light and is the light of men. Go ahead. And the light shineth in darkness. Now the light shined in darkness. Go ahead. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen to that. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now that lets you know the state and condition. 
that mankind was in because that was a fall that took right. place. Y'all, we had a purpose and a plan in mind. And, the, and because of the fall of mankind, well, back in the garden, when Adam, with Adam and Eve, so that was a coming down that put everything in motion. Go ahead, let's finish this. There was a man, six verse. There was mm -hmm. a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead thing. and go, excuse me, Miranda. Let's go ahead and go to the 14th verse. Okay. And the word was made flesh. And now this same, uh-huh, sorry, darling. Now this same mm -hmm. word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Go ahead. And we beheld his glory. Mm-hmm. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Right. Full of grace and truth. Right. Full of grace and truth. Right. Now, let's go. Um, wow. Um, okay. Let's see. Now let's um now we look at the doctrines that we've been given. Let's get Luke. Well, let's get John 5 and 46. Let's see. Yeah, John 5 and 46. John 5 46. Okay. For had you believed Moses, mm -hmm. you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Mm -hmm. But if you believe not his writings, mm how -hmm. shall you believe my words? Right. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine but him that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yahweh or whether I speak of myself. Right, right. Now, we've been called, now let's get 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. First Corinthians 15, 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, mm -hmm. and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, mm -hmm. unless ye have believed in vain. Right. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, mm -hmm. and that he rose again the third day right. according to the scriptures. Right. Okay. Now, that's good. Now, what we have learned in this class is that the world teaches that he came in the institute and set up a Christian way for us to follow. And we learned that he came in and fulfilled the law and the prophets and nailed that to his cross. And by him doing so, that he poured out his spirit upon all men on the day of Pentecost, he poured out his spirit. And, and that made it possible for us to receive the truth. And um, I'm getting, I'm having trouble getting my bearings here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. So I may have to go on and yield the floor because I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable right now. I don't have, you know, trying to get used to this. But uh, I just, I'm just gonna uh, thank Yahweh. 
for the understanding that he's given me. And I hope that I can adjust to this format um, so that I can feel freer because um, it's not coming and I don't want to hold things up. So I'm going to go ahead and I hope something that was read that someone got something out of it and uh, that he'll give me the um, comfort that I need to be able to give a testimony in this setting. It's a little right now, I'm just not bring, it's not coming together for me. So I'm going to go ahead and, and yield and thank you for the opportunity. All right, hallelujah. All right, thank you, Dr. Robert. All right, class, our final speaker for tonight's lecture will be the Dean of the Marine class, Dr. Carl Boston. Dr. Boston. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm happy to be here tonight and always happy to give a testimony of Yahweh uh, in hopes of uh, bringing the soul to the light, you see, and uh, because this is, uh, this is something that you wish the whole world could have and receive because of the beauty in the, of it and the glory of it. and the power of it. Yahweh is demonstrating himself in every form possible. I want to go back to the cloud and get Isaiah 46, 9, and 10. I want to bring it down that way. Uh, go back to the cloud on top of that mountain. That represents Yahweh. That's not Yahweh. It represents him. And that cloud goes all the way around the edge of that chart to show forth that everything that exists, it exists within the pure spirit form or pure spirit state of Yahweh. There's no other place for it to exist. Get uh, Acts 17 and 24. Acts seventeen twenty four, Yahweh who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now, Yahweh who made the world, let this sink in. Yahweh who made the world. And everything that's in it. Now, where did he make it from? Where did these things come from? Yahweh is the only source and substance that exists. And when we're talking about source, we are talking about intelligence. That's the source of all things. The substance is the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. That's the substance. Source and substance come together to produce everything that exists. Yahweh will his spirit to become all that exists. Not only did he will it to do that, he got in it and did it himself. Now, to further try to explain what I mean, what I'm talking about, uh, and hold what I got right there, let's go to John 4 and 24. John 4, 24. For Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, that's what Elohim is. Elohim is a divine title 
for Yahweh in shape and form. Every time Yahweh, this is not the first creation, every time Yahweh devised a purpose and a plan to entertain himself, the first thing he has to do once he set it up purpose is to take on shape and form and carry it out. So Yahweh exists alone and by himself. He got no one else there to assist him or to be with him. He's alone and by himself. He's the ultimate source of substance to limit the bounds of everything. See, he's spirit. Uh, read that again. For Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, now. He said that Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him, they must. That's mandatory. That means that there is no other way to worship him except in spirit and in truth. Which means you have to know what spirit is and you have to know what the truth is if you're going to do it the way he said you must do it. So let's find out what spirit is right quick. Exodus 31 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of her, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Okay. Now here's... uh... Yahweh communicating, we're talking about the Creator, coming down, putting on a shape and form, a spiritual embodiment of a man, but without physical flesh and blood. Now, he's communicating with his servant Moses. When he called Moses up into that mouth that second trip, and he revealed to Moses the pattern of everything, which was Yahweh Elohim himself, He was the pattern by which all things were created. He was manifesting and demonstrating the threefold nature of Yahweh. I said the threefold nature of Yahweh. I didn't say Yahweh was threefold. I just got to read that in in, in the scripture lesson. It says, for one is Yahweh. Not three is Yahweh. One is Yahweh. And he has... Two manifestations, the same one Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And the only time he takes on shape and form is when he gets ready to create. If he's not creating anything, if he's at rest, there is no shape and form formed. See? There's no savior to save anything because there ain't nothing to be saved. And understand this, I've been, I always put this on my mind to go ahead and do this like this. I see folks get the wrong idea when I say that there is no Yahshua, there is no Elohim back there in that pure spirit state when Yahweh go back into his original state. And that is true. There is no Yahshua back there in, in, in the manifest form. See, there's no Elohim back there in, no, in the manifest form. It's back to the pure spirit now. See? Now, if you want to just say, well, what was Yahshua to yesterday, today, forever? Well, when you understand who Yahshua is, that's correct. Yahweh the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yahweh is Yahshua. Understand that. Yahweh is Yahshua. Yahweh is Elohim. Mm -hmm. Yahweh exists alone and by himself. Nothing coexists with him. Anytime time
time Yahweh moved from pure spirit is because he has set up a purpose and a plan. Right. And every right. time he gets ready to create, that Godhead manifests itself. Because there is no other way for Yahweh to create and bring forth what he has purposed except to take on shape and form to become the pattern by which all things will be created. See? That's the pattern within itself. Pure spirit, shape and form, physical manifestation. That's the pattern. And in order to understand that, then he put it in shape and form and created a physical and natural example of that with this universe. That's why they call it a universe, not a triniverse. It's one universe. The land, water, atmosphere. Universe. Threefold. Father, Son, Holy Spirit being one. In other words, Yahweh is playing all the parts. He's playing the part, he is the, the Father, he's playing the part of the Son, and he also is playing the part of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, when, well, and when he's in those manifestations, that's what he is in those manifestations. When he manifests as Joshua, that's what he is there. He's the Son. See? He's the Holy Spirit. When he manifests in that, like that, that's him in that form, but that's what he is there. And when he says Yahshua going back to the Father, all he's doing is taking that body off, going back to the form of Elohim. That's going back to the Father. That's where he comes from. But anyway, I got sidetracked. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Bring me back to what we were talking about. Spirit. We went Exodus thir- uh, 31st chapter. Right, right, right. Talking about what spirit is, Moses in the Mount. Uh, right. Uh, getting the uh, pattern of the tabernacle, Yahweh told him to build one down in the wilderness, just like the one he showed him in the mount. And so when Moses come down with the pattern in his mind, he come down, he had to put a veil over his face. That's what John and the Isle of was looking at when he said that uh, he saw the whole city of New Jerusalem coming down as a bride or dawn for her husband. That's Moses coming down at the mount with the tabernacle pattern in his mind, and he had to put a veil on his face because his face shone. Mm-hmm. So he's coming down, and Yahweh instructing him again, reminding him. He said, "See Moses, I have called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri." See, Yahweh knew him, knew his daddy. <laughs> you understand? Knew his mama. There's not a creature on earth that Yahweh don't know. No matter how insignificant one may think it is. Yahweh know you. He know you by your name. There's not a man, woman, or child has ever set foot on this earth and will set foot on this earth whose name is not written in the book of life. Every soul's name is written in the book of life. And when you don't correspond to what Yahweh has purposed and said for you to do, then your name is blotted out. The book of life is Elohim. Your name is written in him. Well, I wish I could take you further with that. Read that again. Bring me back. I have called that. by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of. Somebody that hadn't blacked out, read it. Go to the thirty-first chapter. Let me escape. That's it. Okay. Go ahead. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim. In okay, with... Let's get the thought. 
Now we're finding out what spirit is. That's what the whole point of this. What is spirit? Now, before we come here to this understanding, folks thought spirit was the air. Didn't have a clue of what spirit it was. And those out there now don't know what spirit is. Satanic or otherwise. Right. Oh. So he is called by name Bezaliah, the son of Uri. See? Of the tribe of what? Judah. Which is the kingship tribe. Read. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim. In now he, put the, hold up, he put the spirit of Elohim in him. Now we're talking about what spirit is. Y'all always say we got to worship him in the spirit and his truth. Now I'm trying to show you what it is. Yahweh put his spirit in Bezalel. Read. In wisdom. Wisdom. That's Yahweh. He put his spirit in him. That's what Yahweh is. Wisdom. He's not something different than wisdom. He is the source of it. He's wisdom. So in effect, he is getting in Bezalel himself. Mm. That's his spirit going in there. And where the spirit of Yahweh is, that's where Yahweh is. There's no place that he's not. So finish that. In wisdom and in understanding and in understanding. Knowledge. See, that's the spirit of Yahweh. Understanding. Listen, what do you do with understanding? Look up that word understand. Let's get a complete thought and understanding of this. Because we're talking about the attributes of Yahweh. The attributes of Yahweh describe him and what he is. That's what that's what they do. He is understand. Under you got it, please? Yes. Understand. Perceive the intended meaning of words a language or a speaker perceive the significance explanation or cause of something interpret or view something in a particular way Yahweh is understanding he looked at this creation as it reads there in Job he looked under the heavens. He saw it all from start to finish, lined it up. He understood. Let's get uh, Proverbs 3.19. Proverbs 3.19. Yahweh, by wisdom, hath founded the earth. Now, remember, remember now, uh, these are attributes of Yahweh. See? Three. Yahweh, by wisdom, hath founded the earth. Mm -hmm. By understanding hath he established the heavens. Now, you see that? By understanding. Now, what was understanding? Perceive the intended meaning of words, a language, or a speaker. To perceive the significance, explanation, or cause of something. Interpret or view something in a particular way. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find... Oh, yeah. All right, I don't see it. Uh, but anyway, that's what understanding is. To it also means to know, know or comprehend. Right. 
To view a thing in a particular way, to know or to comprehend. That's what understand means. And guess what? No means to understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, those attributes, they work together, you understand, as one. Even though they have individual identities and purposes, you see, uh, but they work together as one to achieve the purpose for which Yahweh uh, has impregnated them with. Uh, so let's go on with that. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up. And the clouds. By his, by his knowledge, the depths are broken up. Now we talk about the spirit of Yahweh that he put in Bezalel. In the same spirit that he created with. That's what I'm showing you here. That same wisdom, that same knowledge, the same understanding is what got in Bezalel. And build the tabernacle according to Yahweh's specification. Basically, it was Yahweh in Bezalel building the pattern himself. Right. That's what spirit is. Spirit is Yahweh. I don't know what else people got in their mind. He is some gushy, oozy stuff out there somewhere. <laughs> Yahweh's intelligence, people. <laughs> You understand? Ain't no visualization of that. He has to make you know through the operation and function of the things that he made. You have to see the intelligence of Yahweh, you understand, to create something like this. See? Read on. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. That's right. Don't let them depart. Let, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Proverbs 8 chapter. Proverbs 8 and 1. Here we go. Doth not wisdom cry? Now, he said, does not wisdom cry? And I'm talking about shedding tears. See, read on. And understanding put forth her voice. And understanding put forth her voice. Now I'm showing you individuals, those individual attributes, and what their function is, see, and how they come together to work as one. Does not wisdom cry? Does not understanding put forth her voice? Read. She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the past. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming now in. Talk at about, the door. I'm trying to give you this visualization. Now you're talking about the city of the living Elohim. He cries at the gate of the entrance into it. Mm-hmm. Now, when you look at that veil uh, separating the holy place from the most holy place, that's like the veil that separates this physical creation from the spiritual. That's what that represents in tabernacle pattern, see? The entrance into it is the door. That's how you enter that second heaven. Now here is wisdom is crying. Understanding and put forth her voice. In other words, he's crying unto you in your conscience through preaching this gospel. That's how he's mm-hmm. crying unto you. And it's coming down from heaven into your conscience. That's how you'll know that it's there. You are conscious of it. That's what I mean by coming down into your conscience. You become conscious of it. Read on. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice, 
and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools be ye of an understanding heart. Understand wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, what is wisdom? That's what I was trying to find a few minutes ago. I thought I had it. But go ahead and look that up. Wisdom. Wisdom. The, qual the quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment, the quality of being wise, the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Now that's what wisdom is. Read that again. The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. The <laughs> that's, that's what it is. See? That's the operation of it. It demonstrates what it is through the operation and functioning of it. Yahweh is showing forth his wisdom, his knowledge, and his understanding by how he created these things. For example, get the 48th chapter. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> get the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Start the first verse. <clears throat> Isaiah 48 and 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of Yahweh and make mention of the Elohim of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. I pay attention to that. They don't do it in truth nor in righteousness, you see. Read. For they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the Elohim of Israel. Yahweh of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass. Now you pay attention to what you're reading. He said it for out of his I, mouth. Mm -hmm. Read that again. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Go ahead. Because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. That's why he did it suddenly. <laughs> because he knew. See? Wisdom is based on knowledge. What Yahweh is doing, he's demonstrating his wisdom and how he set this thing up before we brought it into physical manifestation. Maybe I'm going too far with this. Uh, but finish that so I can get back. I have, even from the beginning, declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee. Lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. You see that? Yahweh said before. I showed you these things before they happened. Because I knew you were obstinate. Try to give credit to your idol. See, that's wisdom. Being exercised. 
because he knew what they would do. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, this is so much. All right. Let's get back to Proverbs. Proverbs. But you see how you get in there words down and learn the expressions of them when you're talking about the attributes of Yahweh see you see what he's all about Mm -hmm. and this whole creation and everything that's going on in it is an expression of his thoughts before he brought it down because nothing can go on that he had purpose so what we're looking at is the mind of Yahweh see with this physical and spiritual creation that's what was on his mind, or that's what was in his heart, or that's what was on his spirit, or in his spirit to do this. And so he's expressing himself. For example, Yahweh made Abraham a father of a multitude of many nations. Abraham was representing Yahweh. <coughs> now, mind you, you can't see spirit. You can't see the concept by which Yahweh has set up and operated unless he put it in a physical form. So Abraham being in physical form represents the Father. That's Yahweh. He wanted a seed. Yahweh wanted many children to give an inheritance to. I'm talking Yahweh did. Wanted children to give an inheritance to. And he's demonstrating that through Abraham and that mosaic trick and how he processed this thing and what he's doing now is what was set up back there in that mosaic trick. But it's psychological and spiritual. That's where the man fell was in his conscience. That's where he has to be restored at is in the conscience. Keep in mind that these things that are created they represent an invisible principle. And the only way you can see that invisible principle is by the thing that's made to represent that invisible principle. That's the only way you can see it, through the operation and function of these things and how Yahweh got it going. <clears throat> right quick, uh, Colossians one, uh, two, 2 and uh, mm, started the fifth verse and come down. Let's see how that hit. Yeah. I'm out here now, folks. I can't turn around, so I have to keep going. Colossians 2 and 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, so walk ye in him. As you have received Yahshua the Messiah, now what is Yahshua? Righteous. What is Yahshua? Yahshua is the truth. <laughs> Let me slow this down for you. Yahshua is the truth. What is the truth? The truth. Are you listening? Mm-hmm. The truth is the explanation of Yahweh and his purpose and plan. That's what the truth is. That's Yahshua. Spirit, folks. Wisdom. Knowledge. Understanding. That's what Yahweh is. That's what Yahshua is. Now, it's not just blank wisdom, blank understanding. It's telling a story. It's telling you about Yahweh. It's telling you the truth about Yahweh. That's what the truth does, because it's Yahweh himself. He is the truth. Verses two and three. And he put the truth of himself in the Messiah, which was he himself in him. That was Yahweh and Yahshua. 
manifesting the truth of himself and teaching it the truth of himself and what his purpose and plan is all about. That's what the truth is, folks. It's the explanation of Yahweh and his purpose and plan. That's what was put in Yahshua. That's what Yahshua is. Uh, Ephesians. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get my Bible. Mm. I hate doing this like this. Uh, let's see. Vision. Three. And, uh, 17. 317 and come down. That the, the Messiah, that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all sons what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of the Messiah, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of Yahweh. Now hold it right there. Read that verse again and listen at the words what's being said. Because it's telling a story. It's explaining what Yahweh's purpose is in in uh Microcosm. See? Read. And to know the love of the Messiah. To know. To know the love of the Messiah. Now, what is the love of the Messiah? Boy, I tell you, I love y'all. He keep me going that way. See? To know the love of the Messiah. <clears throat> See? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what is the love of the Messiah? That he loved us and gave his life for us. That's the love of the Messiah. He gave his life so that we could live. See? And because he gave up his life and entered into heaven, you see, uh, back to Elohim. Then Yahweh was able to pass on that knowledge of the spirit of his son into our hearts. Now, what is the spirit of his son? The wisdom and the knowledge of the father. That's what Yahshua come down to do, was to reveal the father to us. By giving us the knowledge and understanding of him and his purpose and plan. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Read that very again. And to know the love of the Messiah, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of Yahweh. Now he's filling you up with Yahweh. He's telling you all about the Father. Passing that knowledge on to you. So that you can be filled with all of the fullness of Yahweh. There won't be no room for you or anything else. See, if you're going to be filled with the fullness of Yahweh, because that's all that it is. Oh, man. Let's go back over there and finish that in Proverbs. Proverbs 8 and 5. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak 
truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Now, right here, I want you to understand this is wisdom and understanding that's speaking. That's what's speaking here. That's what, what you're reading is what they said. <laughs> See? Read. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Okay, let me back it up. That's Yahweh speaking through his wisdom and his understanding. That's who's speaking. That's the intelligence. That's the backbone. That's the core. That's the essence. See? Speaking through his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. See? Read. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. <clears throat> Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Why? Because wisdom is eternal. I'm talking about the wisdom of Yahweh is eternal. Rubies will fade away. Mm -hmm. They will dissolve with the elements of this world. And that's everything that's created. Shall be dissolved. And you know, back into the spirit from which it came. Uh, read on. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Our wisdom dwell with prudence. And now, he's just speaking in, now he's speaking in first person. Right. I, wisdom. That spirit, that's what, that's what Yahweh is. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. See? Read. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. I find out knowledge of witty inventions. That's what this creation is. It's a witty invention. Mm -hmm. Founded by wisdom. As you read there in the Proverbs, Yahweh by wisdom founded the earth. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up. By his understanding, the heaven was established. That's how these things come into being. Read on. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Uh -huh. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. Yahweh said counsel is mine and sound wisdom is mine. Read. I am understanding. I am understanding. He's telling you what he is. I am understanding. And when you receive that understanding, that's him in you. Right. And it's going to make you understand what the purpose and plan of Yahweh is. Which is to glorify and honor himself with everything that he made. And to enter on back into himself. That's our part. That's what we are doing. See? Enter on back into Yahweh that we are already in. And he's in us. See? So we enter back into him psychologically and spiritually because that's how we feel. Get Titus, I think, is the second chapter, maybe, and hold it. Uh, read on. I have strength. 
I have strength. See, wisdom have strength. Understanding have strength. See. Uh, Wisdom and knowledge combined is strength. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Those attributes work and operate together to do what Yahweh purpose for them to do. That's right. See, when he gave that commandment back there, uh, when he said be fruitful and multiply, let everything bring forth fruit of his own kind, that's been going on ever since he said that. That's right. That spirit law carrying those things out. Both in animal, plant, humans. <laughs> That's how it works. He read. By me, kings reign and princes declare justice. Now that's understanding speaking. Right. By me, kings reign. See? And what? And princes declare justice. And princes declare judgment. By me. Read. By me, princesses rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. <laughs> and, and those that seek me early shall find me. Those that seek me early shall find me. Now, hold up. If he's up in the sky beyond the sun, moon, and stars, how are you going to find him? Okay. Early. Seek you Yahweh while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to come a time when he get up out that mercy seat, you ain't going to be able to find him. And I want Thessalonians uh, 1 and 6, I believe. Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. I'm going to close with that. But I want to get this over in Titus too. But finish that where you at. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, doable riches and righteousness. That's good. Let's get over here in Titus. I ain't been able to find it yet. Uh, somebody give me the page when you find it. It's 286. Be what? Wait, yes, the second second chapter. First verse. Not oh, the first verse. We come down. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity. In patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh be not blasphemed. Now hold it there. Remember when we were talking about what, how, how you blaspheme? See, this is one of those things. When you disobey what Yahweh just said, then you blaspheme his name. Read on. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded and all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. 
not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of Yahshua, our Savior, in all things. Now, hold up. Now, that's what Israel was supposed to have done with the statutes and the laws that Yahweh had given them was to take to the world. Now it's spiritual now. They read. But the grace of Yahweh that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that, denying wickedness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the mighty one, our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Rebuke with all authority, you see, when those things pop up. Can't have nobody mealy mouth about it. Well, don't do that. Just let it go. Now you can't let that go. Because it will fester. It will spread like a virus. See? And it will be difficult then, see, to knock that out of one because now it has been crystallized in their mind. So, yeah, you knock that out. You understand? You nip it in the bud. It's not about nobody's feelings. This is not about feelings. You see what I'm talking about? This is about saving souls. Now, finish that in the third, third chapter there. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of Yahweh, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Hold it right there. Now, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, washing all that carnality out of you. And regenerate it with the truth. See? That's how you change back into him. Read. Which he shed on us abundantly through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. That being just Hold up. up. Who shed upon us abundantly by Yahshua the Messiah. So... Uh, this is Yahweh doing this. Giving us this gift, see? Read. Through Yahshua the Messiah. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in Yahshua might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Okay, that's good. The last one, because my time don't run out. Uh, second Thessalonians 1 and 6. 
I hope y'all could, could follow me all over the place. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. That's right. When Yah That's right. Who are troubled, rest with us. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Doing what? In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. On that them that know Yahweh, why? Because the eternal life is to know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, then you shall be destroyed. Read. And that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. On them that don't obey the gospel of the Messiah. Read. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power. Mm -hmm. When he shall come to be glorified in his sons and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. When he comes to be what? Glorified in his sons. Right. That's where he's coming from, from within you. I think you read this in Ephesians, I believe, with Romans 1, where it said that uh, if the spirit of the Messiah dwell in you, he that raised up Joshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. So that's how your body shall be quick and a change if you're still here uh, when the consummation happens. It should be an instantaneous process. Everything shall be changed back into the spirit from which it came. That is that consuming fire. I hope I didn't mess that up too bad, folks, uh, and that you was able to get something out of that. Uh, I appreciate those before me, the preachers that come in and uh, to give a testimony of Yahweh. I would like to hear more from you out there. And uh, let me kind of sit back and absorb where you are and see what it is Yahweh will give me to try to make that connection. So I hope you got to somebody. Y'all will keep your blessings off. Hallelujah. 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 All right, class, that concludes our lecture for tonight. Are there any questions or comments from anyone on YouTube or in the Zoom class? Questions or as the YouTube is taking credit, it does take a, a little bit longer because it's a delay. While I'm waiting on seeing any questions from YouTube, um, we will have Monday night's class tomorrow night, our basics and foundation class tomorrow night. The topic again was to choose two words from this list to do a 10 to 12 minute report. The words are idolatry, image, no ignorance, reveal, life, death, carnal, spirit. Faith, sin, name, title, purpose, conception, wisdom, and mystery. That particular class will not be live streamed. It will be recorded and posted on YouTube um, following the class. If anybody wants to join us during class tomorrow night, you can send us an email at the Meridian class at gmail.com. That is our email address. If you want to email me and I can send you the Zoom link to join us tomorrow, the class starts tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And so that will be tomorrow, Monday. Um, also, if you want to listen to any of the previously recorded classes, um, you can dial 712-770-4709, access code 676-123-POUND, and use the reference list here on the screen 
for any of the reference numbers to list to any of the previously recorded calls. We will have a place to have these um, in MP3 format, where you can just go to a website and click on it instead of having to dial in, but we're working on that. Um, these are the different topics here on the screen. This is 51 through 107, and then 108 through 116. All right. I, I did send an email. I'm sending an email, another one, to get the Zoom for tomorrow night. Um, this is Carolyn Russell. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. It's me. I'll send it to you. It's me. This is which Carolyn is this? Russell, Oakland. Russell. Okay. I, do I have your, I got your phone number, right? I'm not sure yes, I get I it. it. Okay. Yes, yeah, you do. I do. You I do, do have it. Mm -hmm. I'll send it to you if we um, get through with the Zoom last night. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any other questions or comments before we conclude? Great class. I truly enjoyed it, always. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's conclude. With we want to hear from you too, Dr. Watson. Um, we'll go ahead and conclude with the doxology. Take from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.